Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on graphing quadratics in vertex form. So one of the things we can do for number one, with any graph that you have an X and a Y for, you could plug in points for your X, and then as soon as you plug it into your equation, like over here for number one, you're going to get your outputs for Y, and each one of these points is going to represent a different point for your graph. Now that takes a lot of time. An easier way is just to understand the ins and outs of vertex form. So this first part, I'm not gonna get right into the questions. I'm gonna have a brief overview of vertex form. So if you wanna skip through this, that's fine if you already know it, but this is going to be a brief intro into vertex form. So this is the general form right here as I circled it. Y equals A times the quantity X minus H plus K. So the typical ins and outs. One, you're always gonna have your X and Y. These are gonna stay just X and Y. You're not going to really mess with those. Those are your inputs and outputs. Okay, but the really things that you need to look at are H, K, and A. So let me kind of rewind here. I'm going to get rid of these highlights. So A, H, and K are really the main focus points. And most important is probably going to be your vertex. So your vertex is composed of H and K. So if you know and can identify your H and your K, it makes it pretty simple. Now, one note here, this typical form for vertex form is there's minus H. So it's gonna be whatever the opposite sign there. And we're gonna talk about that later, but just be careful with your H. The K, if it's positive, it's gonna be positive here. That one's pretty easy, but be careful with your H. Now, the axis of symmetry, that goes through your vertex. So I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration. If we have our parabola, our vertex, probably should just open with this. That's our vertex. Okay, so that's an important point. And the axis of symmetry goes through that. So that's a vertical line right where uh, your x value is for your vertex. So x equals h is your axis of symmetry. Now your y-intercept is also an important point, and this is the same um, as it is with even slope-intercept form. This is when x equals 0 you're gonna find out what y equals when x equals zero. So it, this one actually requires the most math is you have to plug in zero for x, and I'm missing something here, check this out. Need that squared. <laughs> it's a parabola, so you definitely need that squared. Sorry if that was confusing earlier. So x equals zero, y equals question mark, that's what we're gonna be solving for. Now some other quick things about uh, graphing it. This isn't extremely important. The y-intercept, I think, is a little bit more important, but this could be useful later on. If you're going to have a vertical stretch, think um, the graph getting skinny. Okay, so it gets skinny, it gets vertical faster. A is going to be bigger than 1. So this number being multiplied in front of the parentheses, if it's bigger than 1, that means it's going to be a vertical stretch It's going to get skinny. If it widens, okay, that's a vertical compress, that means A is between 0 and 1. So think of it as a fraction or as a decimal. Then we're talking about it widening out. Okay. Now, if it opens up, that means A is bigger than 0. Okay, It's a positive number. And if it opens down, that means it is a negative number. Okay, So just some nuance there. That will help us graph it. And we're going to show you how this is very effective in our first example. We'll roll through as many as we can and then get to the multiple choice section at the bottom. So number one, first thing we're always going to want to identify is let's identify some key pieces of information. And I'm going to probably just copy and paste this and save this. So we want our H, we want our K, we want our Y intercept. Okay, we want to know if it opens up or down and yeah, so let's let's say let's make that up or down, up slash down, and then these are going to be our. This is we're we're going to copy and paste this, and we're going to take this with us for our other section. So H, H is this first section, X minus H. Now notice it's a plus one. The temptation is to just write a positive one here, but that's wrong. Okay, technically this is X minus a negative one. Okay, so our H is actually negative 1. The K is the easy part. This part is always just as it seems. So if you have something outside of the parentheses, that's just going to be what is your K, your negative 4. Now, from that, we're going to use these two, and that's going to form our vertex. So our vertex is going to be the point negative 1, negative 4. That, we're going to just combine these two 
to get our vertex. So let me go ahead and find that. So we get negative one, that's for my x, and then down to negative four right here. All right, so that's my first step. My y-intercept is also a very important point. This is when I'm gonna plug in zero for x. So I'm kind of out of space here. I'm just gonna kind of uh, go in beneath it. So I'm gonna plug in zero plus one squared times negative four minus four. So as I plug in zero for x, as I've demonstrated there, that's a little too big here, let me small, get the highlighter a little bit smaller, here we go. So there is my zero, I could be a little bit bigger. Getting a little picky here. So there's my x equals zero, and now I'm solving for y. I wanna know what y is for my y-intercept. So I get one squared times negative four. Order of operations is very important here. I have to square one first, which is just one. Negative four times one is just negative four, so I have negative four minus four, equals y, so my y-axis, excuse me, y, y intercept is gonna be negative eight. So I'm gonna make that a point on my y-axis. So now I have two points, that's really important. Um, I also need my axis of symmetry, okay? That's from the questions, it says, be sure to include the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept. As I've said, the axis of symmetry is just gonna be right through, um, let me use a yellow line for this, right through our vertex so don't worry too much about that if you want to label that that's fine just know that it's going to be x equals whatever this value is right there negative one so i'm going to graph my uh, axis of symmetry here okay and now i'm just going to kind of play connect the dots one thing too is it's going to be symmetrical on both sides so as we know parabola opens up like this notice how this one's pretty skinny that's because of that negative four and also notice how it's opening down okay i forgot to include that my winer set negative eight Okay, and open up or down. It's opening down because this is negative right here. So let me highlight this negative. It's opening down because of that reason. And then we're gonna have it be symmetrical on both sides. So it's gonna look something like this. And that's a fantastic graph, okay? So that's what it should look like. And that's all you need. So like I said, I'm gonna copy and paste these things that we need over here. And then we're just gonna replay it for number two. Right off the bat, I know it's gonna open down. Take a look at that. Okay, and then I know my h is again negative one, and then this is negative one this time. So if I'm looking for my vertex, boom, it's right there, and I know it's gonna be pointing down this way. All right, so let's continue a little bit further. I know my axis of symmetry, boom, 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 boom. X equals negative one. Okay, it's gonna follow that kind of mirror on both sides. My y-intercept is probably the toughest part of this exercise. I know it's gonna be zero plus one. Okay, I'm gonna stop writing the zero. I'm just gonna pretend this x goes away. And I have one squared, which is just one, negative one, because that negative out in front, minus one. So it looks like my y-intercept is going to be negative two. Minus one, minus one. That was that second minus one, just in case you're wondering. So I'm gonna plot it right there. And I know it needs to be the same on both sides. And there I go. It's gonna look something like that, okay? So we can get a general idea. Obviously having some more points in here would be effective, and we could find those by using this table like I made over here on the left, x, y. I could plug in negative three, and I could see what I get for y. I can plug in negative four, and that would give me a better indication of where the parabola goes, okay? But again, um, just getting a general idea here. And for example, these graphs kind of tell you which values and where it should go. Like this one shows you that it's gonna be opening up because it's got nothing below the x-axis, okay? So let's go ahead and do number four. We're gonna skip number three for now just because it's pretty similar to the other ones. We are, our x is gonna be the same, negative one. Positive one this time, y-intercept. We're essentially just gonna cross this guy off. We have one squared times two is two, plus one, it's gonna give us three. I know it opens up because the a is positive, and now I'm ready to plot my points. So I'll go to negative one, positive one. There's my vertex. So I know my axis of symmetry is right there. I can label that x equals negative one. And then I'm gonna get my y-intercept, which is three. I need to have it be the same on both sides. So if I have a three, my uh, uh, kind of one to three relationship there, I need to have a one to three relationship on the other side, okay? Just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at for symmetry. And it's skinny because it is uh, it has a, a scale factor of two out in front. The A value is two, so I know it's gonna get skinny. It's gonna have a vertical stretch component. Um, let's look for some other ones here. Let's just do this one real fast. So we have negative one 
I'm not going to copy and paste it this time. Hopefully, you guys are following me. If you need uh, me to explain it again, just let me know in the comments. So this one's going to be opening down. I'm going to find my y-intercept real quick, and that's going to be 1 times negative 3 plus 3. My y-intercept is actually 0. I'm going to put it on both sides because my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 1. And it's going to look something like that. I have all those components that I've talked about. I've just graphed it very quickly now. Let's do a couple more on this section. So uh, let's start with, um, let's go to this guy right here, number 9. And we'll finish up with number 10. So 2, negative 2 is my uh, vertex. And I got that from, this is x. Uh, x minus h, so my it, think of the opposite here. If you see plus, I think it needs to be negative, but it's x minus h, my h equals 2, so that's going to be the y, the x value of my um, vertex. And then here we have negative 2 here, so that is my vertex. I know it opens up, okay, um, but I need to find my y-intercept. So I'm going to cross this out, and I get, whoops, not the negative. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm squaring it. So we get 4 minus 2. My y-intercept is going to be 2, so it's going to be all the way up there. And then I need to have this balanced on my axis of symmetry, which is at x equals 2. So I need to kind of go over two units and have it be on the same side. There you go. So it's not a perfect parabola. It has a little bit too much of a V-shape. So if you're being a little bit picky here, it should kind of bend out like that. That is a much better parabola. Okay. And I said I was going to finish up with this one. So we have 1, negative 3, that's right here, is my vertex um, axis of symmetry. My y-intercept, 3, is going to be actually 0. And I put it on both sides. I missed. <laughs> Don't miss. You can always erase. All right, and there we go. There's my uh, kind of V-shaped parabola. Let's get in the multiple choice section. This one's actually pretty easy. Just looking at the vertex, you're going to be able to find most of them. Uh, and not even need to do anything else. So know that it opens down, okay? This one opens up, that one's out. And then the vertex is at four comma negative four. So I'm looking for that vertex. That one has a vertex four, negative four. This one does not, this one does not. So easy choice here, A is gonna be our choice for number 11, let's do that. I like that better. Okay, uh, number 12. So uh, vertex is at one comma four. So this one's not. Uh, this one's not, this one's not, this one is. So just from the vertex, we were able to get number 12. Let's look at number 13. And again, if I'm going too fast, let me know in the comments. I can explain it further. If there's a problem that I skip, let me know. So uh, 1, 4 is the vertex, uh, 1, negative 4 this time, actually. 1, negative 4, and it looks like we only have 1. That's at 1, negative 4, and it's this one. And just so you know, it has a positive A value, so it's opening up. So is this one, so we know it's not A because it's not opening up. And we're looking for a vertex of 1, 2. And it's only one of those, and that's D. Forgot to highlight it. And there we go. So that's all there is for this uh, CUDA worksheet tutorial. If you have any further questions or need another concept um, covered by me with a video, let me know in the comment section below. Either way, I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.